Good day. Today we're going to take a look at how to set up telemetry values and other stuff using the main views and widgets on the RadioMaster TX16S. We'll take a look at the TX16S widget setup for both telemetry values and text. Yes, you can put text on your RadioMaster TX16S transfer screen and using different color fonts. I'll also show you how to display your throttle position so you can actually see the hover point throttle position for each of your quads, which could help you in making throttle curves for better throttle control. I'll even provide you with what the telemetry values actually mean for both TBS Crossfire Telemetry and FreeSky SmartPort Telemetry. Sound useful? Then make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. When you first power up your RadioMaster TX16S, it may look something like this with the exception of the background image, since I've uploaded the custom background image. If you're interested in learning how to do that, check out this video on custom images. This is your main view screen. It's divided into two primary sections, the top bar and your main view layout area. You can put different pieces of information you find useful in both of these areas, the top bar and the main view layout area. These pieces of information can be added to these areas in little boxes called widgets. We already have some default information in both of these areas. For instance, in our top bar, we have four different pieces of information by default. The first piece of information that we have here that looks like a battery is our transmitter's battery voltage level. This will give you an indication of how much useful battery life you have left before you need to recharge your TX16S battery. To calibrate your TX16S battery voltage and to set up a low voltage alarm as a reminder, check out this video on RadioMaster TX16S setup. The icon just above the battery is for the volume or audio level of your RadioMaster TX16S speaker output. You can actually set up your volume on a switch to turn it up and down if you'd like. As a bonus, I'll quickly show you how to do that. I put mine on my right slider over here. To set your volume up on the right slider, press and hold the system button and page over to radio setup. Press the page key and set up a global function on one of these empty lines as I've done here for global function 1 or GF1. To change any of the values on the line, use the scroll bar to go to the correct column by pressing enter and scrolling right and left. To change the value in the column, you just press down on the scroll bar and then move the scroll bar left and right to find the value you're looking for. Once you've found it, press down on the scroll bar again. To find a specific switch that you want to use, such as the right slider, or one of these pots up here, engaged. just press the enter key, this will start flashing, and then move the switch that you want to use for your volume, and it will autofill it in for you. Like that. To enable the function that we just set up, we press enter to get out of this entry, scroll over, and just check this box by pressing enter. There, we've set up our volume on the right slider, and now we can see our audio level change through the volume icon simply by moving the right slider. The piece of information we have over here on the far right side of the top bar is obviously your date and time, which you set up in the first two lines of your radio setup menu. When you have your drone or quadcopter powered on, these bars over here show you your received signal strength indicator, or RSSI level. In this main view layout area, we have displayed over here on the right the model name an image that we have selected and loaded for use. We also have these little red boxes all over the place on the main screen. These are indicators for the positions of your left and right sliders. Your trims. Trim center. Trim center. Trim center. And your six buttons underneath the Radio Master logo. If you don't like these little red squares displayed on your main view area, I'll show you here in a minute how to get rid of those from your screen. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. Press and hold the telemetry button over here. 
scroll down to sliders and uncheck that box. Then scroll down to trims and uncheck that box. Return and they're gone. That was easy. Now let's see how we can add some telemetry and other information to our main view for this model. There's lots of different types of information we can add and what's useful to you depends on the type of flying you're doing. I fly micro quads, so when I'm flying, I'm not normally looking down at my screen. So the information I put on my screen, I find somewhat useful for me after I've powered on my quad and before launch. That's the sort of information I'll be using on my examples. The information you find useful may be different than the information examples I'm showing. In fact, if you know of other useful information to put on your screen and why you choose to have it displayed, please let everyone know about it in the comment section below so we can all benefit from it. All right, let's add some useful information to our main view screen. We press and hold the telemetry button like we did earlier. That brings up what we see as main view one. Because it's numbered one, that also tells us we can probably have more than one main view for our model. In fact, we can have up to five main views that we can page through for our model using the page forward and backward buttons on our Radio Master TX16S. To add an additional main view, we press the page forward button, then press down on the scroll bar for enter, and now we have an additional main view we can set up. I'm only going to go through how to set up one main view as the process for each is the same. Now let's add some useful information to our main view top bar. To do that, we simply press the page back button to get to our user interface. While we're in our user interface and with OpenTX 2.3.10 installed, I have these three different themes I can choose from. I've selected this middle one and uploaded my custom background image we saw earlier. You could choose this one or this other one and change the colors however you'd like. I'm going to go back to the middle one and use my custom background image. To add our useful information to the top bar, we scroll down to top bar setup and press enter. We immediately see that we have four widget areas to add information. We don't have to use them all. In fact, we don't have to use any of these. But what's some information we might find useful after we power on our quad and prior to launch? Well, it would be nice to see our TX16S battery voltage as a number in addition to this battery level icon. So let's put that next to our battery level icon in this widget area. We do that by scrolling over to this widget area and pressing enter. We're currently on this box, and when I scroll over, the dotted lines will become solid lines. One, two, three, and we press enter. A pop-up menu is displayed. That's not what I want to put in the widget area. I want my transmitter's battery voltage. So I use the scroll bar to find it. I know our transmitter's battery voltage is a value. So I find I use the scroll bar and I scroll until I find the word value. There it is. And I press enter. My rudder shows up. That's not what I want, especially since my quad doesn't have a rudder. So I click enter while this is highlighted and I use the scroll bar to find B A T T or bat for battery. There it is. Press enter, and then the return button. There. Now our TX16S battery voltage is shown as a value next to the battery icon. What else might be useful that we can put up here? How about our control signal strength? That might be good to know. Since I'm using Crossfire, I measure the quality of my control signal with a telemetry value called link quality, which is represented by the telemetry value RQLY. The reason I use RQLY instead of RSSI with Crossfire is explained in this video linked below on TBS Crossfire Telemetry. You could also use RSSI if you're using a smart port telemetry receiver. In fact, the telemetry values for Crossfire can be found in the Crossfire manual, which I have a link to in the video description below, and the telemetry values for smart port can be found at this site, which is also linked in the video description below. For me to get RQLY up in the top bar, I go to our user interface by pressing and holding the telemetry button, paging back, using the scroll bar to scroll down to top bar setup, 
press enter, and I scroll over, as we did earlier, to the widget area that I want to add RQLY to. Press enter, and our pop-up window appears. We scroll over to value again, since telemetry is a value, and press enter. And we scroll to source. We could either press enter and use our scroll bar as we did earlier to find the telemetry value for RQLY. I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to press enter to get out of that. And instead, I'm going to press and hold the scroll bar. And this other pop-up menu appears. These are the different categories of things you can use as a source. For a better understanding of sources, inputs, and mixers in OpenTX, make sure to check out this video on OpenTX Basics. Now, in order for us to use a telemetry value, we will have already had to discover sensors with our receiver on the telemetry page of our model setup menu. For this video, I'm assuming we've already done that. So to use a telemetry value as our source, we scroll down. You don't see telemetry here. So we scroll down, or we can scroll backwards. And there it is. And we select telemetry. That's only going to bring up the telemetry values that we can select, not any of these other things. So I'm going to press enter, and it brings up only those options for telemetry that we can insert as our source. We use our scroll bar to find RQLY, and you saw there that we have RQLY, RQLY minus, and RQLY plus. All we want here is RQLY. We press enter, hit return. Now with our quadcopter powered up, the quality of our signal strength will be displayed. Now let's try putting some text in one of our top widget bar areas just for fun to see how it's done. We go to our user interface, select top bar setup, scroll to the widget area that we want to put the text in, and press enter just like before. I'm going to put it in this first widget area. Our pop-up window appears, and we don't want this. We want to look for text. So we scroll until we find text. There it is. And press Enter. Here the default text is My Space Label, which is eight characters in length, including the space in between the word My and Label. So that's how many characters, eight, you have for each of the texts you place in a widget. You can change these two words, My Label, to any eight character alphanumeric you would like. For our example, I'm going to change it to TMAC FPV. Now in the intro to this video, I mentioned we could use whatever color text we want. Here's where you do that. We scroll down to color, press enter, and change these RGB values to our favorite color. If you don't know what values to use, you can either experiment with them by changing them and watching this color here change. or just Google RGB values for whatever color you want. Insert the values and press the Enter button, as I just did. To change the text size, we press Return to exit out of this color field, and we scroll down to Size. We press Enter, and our options for size are Standard, Tiny, Small, Mid, or Double. I'm going to go with Double to make it big. We press Enter, and then the return button. First, I'm going to change these two words, my label, to TMAC FPV. And to change a small letter to a big letter, you just press and hold down until it turns to a capital letter. And the entry right before the letter A is a blank. And just for fun, I'm going to put a shadow on it by scrolling down to shadow and checking that box. Press the return key to exit out of here. And now we have TMAC FPV on our top bar, which is sort of cool. How about if we put some more useful information on our main view layout area? To do that, we press and hold the telemetry button. Here we can choose the number of widgets we would like on our main view. Our options are one big one, two, three, four, or eight. I'm going to select four. Then we press the return button. 
and scroll down to set up widgets. We press enter and now we have four widget areas on our main view to populate with useful information. I'll populate the two on the left with telemetry values. For the top one, since I'm running with a GPS module, I'd like to know before I put my goggles on and launch how many satellites I'm locked onto. So in this top area, I'll put our crossfire telemetry value SATS, or S-A-T-S, for the number of satellites I've acquired. If you're interested in getting a quicker GPS satellite lock with your GPS module, make sure to check out this video linked below on GPS module satellite fix. So to put the number of SATS in this widget area, we select it, scroll to value, press enter. I'm going to press and hold the scroll bar, scroll up to telemetry, and I'm going to look for SATS by using the scroll bar. There it is. Press enter, hit return, and now I've got number of SATS displayed in this upper left widget area once I power up my quad. In this bottom widget area, maybe I want to know my quad's battery voltage level. With Crossfire, that telemetry value is RXBT, and with SmartPort, that telemetry value is VFAS or VFAS. So in my case, I'll find and insert RXBT. So we scroll down till this is a solid line widget area, press enter. We want value again, press enter. I'm going to press and hold to get telemetry up by scrolling up, press enter. And now I'm looking for RXBT. There it is. There is RXBT minus and plus. We want RXBT. Press enter and return. And now we have RXBT showing in our widget area when we power on the quad. And we haven't acquired any satellites yet. That's why this telemetry value here I like because I don't have to be wearing my goggles and looking at the OSD screen until I've acquired the sufficient number of satellites for Betaflight GPS Rescue to kick in. Now I mentioned earlier I'd show you how to put your throttle position on the screen to maybe help you out with making throttle curves for better throttle control. To do that we're going to go over here to our third widget area, press enter to select the widget, this time we want gauge. We don't want to scroll to value. So I'm going to press enter. But I don't want aileron. To select our source, I press enter. And then since I want the throttle position, all I have to do is move the throttle and it will autofill. Hit return. And now we've got our throttle position in the upper right widget area so that if we want to see our hover point throttle position using line of sight we've got it right here on our transmitter screen. So now we have on our RadioMaster TX16S some useful information on our transmitter and on our quad we have our control signal quality, the number of satellites we've acquired, our quad's battery voltage, and we can now see our throttle position when we're testing out our hover point while flying line of sight. The last piece of information I want to place on our main view is our model image. To do that, we scroll over to this widget area so that the area is highlighted with a solid line, press enter, and we want to change this to model BMP right there. And we press enter, and that's obviously not the model image I want for a micro FPV quad. That's because we need to select the actual image we want displayed in our model setup. So let's return out of here. Press our model button. Here we want to add our model name. Hit return. Scroll down to our model image and select the model image from the images folder of our SD card which show up as a pop-up menu. Here. I've got a custom model image I've made that I want to select for our Rattler XF or our extended flight Rattler. So I'm going to scroll down and find that. Here it is. And once again to learn how to make Custom images for your RadioMaster TX16S, make sure to check out this video on custom images linked below. I'm going to select this Rattler XF for my extended flight version of my Rattler build. Return out of this. And here's our main view we've set up using telemetry. Our throttle stick as a source, text, and an image, all with four widgets in the top bar and four widgets in the main view input area. 
I think it turned out pretty good, and we've got some valuable information on our screen, which we can use prior to goggles down, along with some fun stuff too. All right, that's how you can set up your RadioMaster TX16S main views and widgets to display your telemetry values and other useful stuff. What things are you going to put on your screens and widgets? Let me know in the comments section below, and if you have questions, put them down there too, so that we can all learn from each other and continue our journey to better FPV fun. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Till then, thanks for your time, and I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friends.